The number one thing that's annoying for freelancers is finding those jobs. Everyone loves having to work and get paid more than you would get paid in a normal job, have the freedom of schedule. But to get there, you have to get those jobs. And the two most commonly known methods of finding jobs that most people consider to be the easiest, the most pain-free, and the best to use for beginners are using Upwork or using cold email. In this video, I'm going to help you figure out which one of these methods is best for you in your situation. Upwork is a choice for most people because it's the most similar way of finding freelance jobs to finding normal, regular jobs like you've ever done with a resume and all that thing, all right? You basically see job offers and you basically create sort of a resume, which is your profile, and then you contact these places that tell you, hey, we need a web developer, we need a whatever your job is, and you send them your resume. You apply to these jobs, they see your profile, if they like it, they offer you an interview, and so on and so forth. It's really similar to normal jobs, and that's the reason why, for a lot of people, it's the easiest method to get into, but it's also the most popular method because of that. Because most people are not comfortable learning other methods of finding jobs, and they want something that allows them to freelance while still staying in their comfort zone and using this method of finding jobs that is similar to what they've done their entire life. That means that most freelancers, the vast majority of freelancers, are going to at least try Upwork at some point. And it's definitely the most used method as far as I know, which means that there's a lot of competition on Upwork. Pros, easy to use. You can use it for free. Cons, number one, high competition. All right, You can apply to a lot of jobs, which is awesome. You can find jobs easily, which is awesome. You can find a high variety of jobs, which is awesome. It can allow you to find clients that are willing to pay you for skill sets that maybe in your area there are no other jobs for, which is awesome. Problem with Upwork is that you're going to be competing for most um, job positions with a lot of other freelancers, and a lot of them are going to be from emerging countries. That means that they will probably be willing to work and do the same things that you are willing to do for a lot less dollars per hour. That means that it's going to be difficult for you to find jobs, especially early on, with people willing to pay you a lot of money. You possibly wanted to become a freelancer because you expected you were going to make a lot more money than or maybe a little more money and have the freedom uh, that freelancing brings a little more money than what you would make in a normal job. But with Upwork, because of the fact that you're going to be competing, especially at the entry level positions with a lot of freelancers from emerging countries willing to work sometimes for $5 an hour, sometimes for less, it's going to be difficult for you to find a lot of good entry level jobs as a beginner. Um, what I've experienced a lot is that when I personally make job offers on Upwork, because I've also used Upwork as a client, not just as a freelancer, I get a ton, a ton of people applying to my job offers. I mean, I posted a job offer one day and 48 hours later, we had 92 messages or 93 messages or close to that. And it was really hard for us to really go through all of these people and give everyone a chance. And what ended up happening is we thought, hey, we don't have time to actually look at all these proposals. We're just going to look at who's the cheapest and who looks the most competent based on profile pictures and communication and basically their, their profile while, while skimming it. And we basically threw, threw out like 95% of the respondents and only kept like three or four of them and worked with them. So, so what that means for you is that if you want to be competitive on Upwork, you need to be, be really good at making good profiles or, and you need to work really hard on that profile because you're going to want to stand out among the sea of competition. It also means that you're probably going to have to apply to a lot more jobs 
than if you were trying to get a normal job. You know, maybe you're used like me that you want to get a new job in your local area. Maybe you send like three or four resumes and you'd probably get a new job from that. On Upwork, it's not really how it works. There's too much competition right now. And if you really want to get a lot of jobs right now, uh, starting out for a lot of different fields, I know, you know, there, there's some uh, positions, some careers where what you do is so rare and so hard to find that you won't have a lot of competition on Upwork. But if you're doing uh, jobs that are very common, you're probably going to have a lot of competition, which means that you're going to have to work hard on your profiles, probably pay a photographer to make uh, good pictures of you so that you stand out and work really hard on it. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult for you to get jobs and more than that you're going to have to make sure that you apply to a lot of jobs and that means that you're going to have to pay money for connects connects are the currency on upwork that uh, allows you to apply to more jobs because upwork allows you to only apply to a few jobs for free if you want to apply to more jobs they make you pay for that and if you want to get started and charge a relatively good wage you're going to have to apply to a lot of jobs. If you only apply to a few jobs and you're charging more than probably minimum wage, it's going to be difficult for you to get started. If you're not willing to work for less than minimum wage or around minimum wage and you want to make like 15, 20, 25 or maybe more per hour, Upwork is going to be very hard for you. And when it comes to your profiles, if you don't have a degree, if you don't have a lot of education credentials, if you don't have work experience, if you don't have a lot of pro projects on your portfolio that you can show off, it's going to be very difficult for you to make really good profiles starting out. And again, if your profiles don't stand out, it's going to be very difficult for you to find good jobs, which means that you're going to have to apply to more jobs to get the same results, which means it's going to take you more time to get the same amount of jobs which means that you're going to have to pay more money for connects to be able to pay for these jobs. And you know, that's going to be more of a pain for you. I feel that Upwork, I believe Upwork is going to be probably best for you. If you already have some work experience, some school credentials, and you're willing to work for not a lot of bit money in the beginning and accept that maybe for the couple of few of your first year, you're probably going to make less money than you would make in a normal job of your field. But if that's okay for you, considering that it gives you a lot of freedom, freedom of schedule, freedom of working with who you want, if that's for you worth getting paid less money than you would make probably in a normal job, well, maybe Upwork's for you, for you because after all, it is the most uh, obvious and simple way of finding jobs as a freelance developer. Uh, it is probably the only method that you can successfully do without any training. Actually, you only have to work hard in your profile, probably hire a photographer, and if you send a lot of proposals, you should get, you know, relatively fine success. Cold email, on the other hand, if you don't know how to write cold email, you're going to get a lot of negative responses. You're going to have to send a lot of emails to get results. You need to be ready for that. Um, actually, that's very similar to Upwork. Both of them, you have to be ready to send a lot. But the beauty about email is it's more difficult for you to find companies to work with. However, you have the freedom to target any type of company that you want to work with. Now, you might be thinking, if I'm on Upwork, I could theoretically just choose which companies on Upwork that I would want to work with. And while that's true, the problem with that is that on Upwork, Upwork is a platform that attracts a certain type of client, okay? Upwork has the reputation of a platform that as an entrepreneur, you can go to to hire cheap Indians who are going to be willing to do the same work that people in your country could do, but for cheaper. All right. This is, unfortunately, that's the reputation of Upwork. And so because of that reputation, this site attracts a lot of entrepreneurs who are looking for cheap labor. And for entrepreneurs who are looking for qualified uh, freelancers, a lot of them think, oh, well, I won't go on Upwork because it's 
just a place for cheap labor and they want quality and they don't trust that they're going to find it on Upwork. It's completely fake, fake expectations, but that's still how a lot of companies view Upwork. Upwork attracts bad clients and sort of pushes away good clients. And a lot of the good companies that you would want to work with companies that are highly likely of being interested in your services and companies that typically have a higher budget or are willing to pay more money for your type of services, which means that they're typically going to be willing to pay more per hour. A lot of these companies are not on Upwork. A lot of them don't even know about Upwork and a lot of them don't want to be on Upwork because of Upwork's reputation. So if you want to be working with higher paying clients, get higher paying jobs, you need to be able to find a way to reach them and they're not on Upwork. And cold email is one of the ways that you can use. It's, in my opinion, probably the easiest way that you can use to contact them. I mean, by, by easy, I mean the way that you need the less training to be able to pull off successfully. And one of the biggest misconceptions I believe a lot of people have about freelancing is you think that it works like normal jobs. When you're starting out, you don't make a lot of money and over time you get paid more and more per hour because you get better and you get more experience. With freelancing, that's not really how it works. Because here's the thing, companies that make a lot of money and have a lot of money to spend on freelancers, typically they work very differently from small companies that don't have a lot of money. Their management is totally different. Their business structure is totally different. What they're looking for is totally different. And because of that, learning to sell to small companies and learning to sell to bigger companies, higher paying companies are two different ways of selling. You know, they're looking for different things. And so you have to calibrate differently. Learning to get good at finding low paying clients sort of helps you to find higher paying clients, but it's not the same thing. You also, you have to learn the specific skills of selling to higher paying clients. And I think one of the things people don't realize is you can, as a freelancer, just choose to work with higher paying clients right away. In my first year as a freelancer, I managed to find several people, several people in my first year who were willing to pay over $65 an hour for my time. And when I say several people, I probably worked on a dozen projects of people willing to pay over $65 an hour for my time. If you know how to find them, if you know how to talk to them, it's something that you can do even though you have zero experience. And the reason I was capable to find people willing to pay a lot of money for my time is that we were using cold email, we were using cold call, we were using these types of methods that don't rely on whether or not you have a good resume, a good portfolio, or good school credentials. Because here's the thing, if you're working as a freelancer on Upwork, the thing that people are going to base their buying decision on, base their decision of whether or not they hire you, is going to be whether or not they like your profile, what's your hourly rate, these sort of things. If you're trying to sell via cold email, the thing that they're going to be evaluating you on is going to be the way that you approach them, the way that you talk to them. In my experience, at least like 60% of the people I get into contact with never asked for my portfolio, never asked for my education, nothing. And the reason they never notice that you don't have experience or don't have a portfolio or nothing like that is because they never ask. They expect that if you contact them is because you're a professional, you know what you're doing. If you sound like an expert, they're going to feel like you're an expert. They're going to trust you. But one of the things you need to be successful with email is, you know, you need to have good emails. And I could teach you everything I know about writing a good email. But that would be a lot of hours of your time. And I know a lot of you probably want to get started freelancing right away. So what you could do instead is just use my email templates that I've tested. All right, just use them. If you use them and you make emails that are pretty much identical to the ones that I make, you should get results that are pretty interesting, right? If you want to get access to my email templates, I sell them for like $3 or $4 on my, on my website. If you want to get access to that, you will find a link to that in the description. Otherwise, I recommend you subscribe to my channel because as I said, in my first year, I've managed to find people who were willing to pay over $65 an hour for my time as a freelance developer. I know as a beginner how to get started freelancing, how to succeed, and I'm going to share with you 
lessons that I've learned allow me to do that in my upcoming videos. I'm also going to share with you a lot of pitfalls that I've fallen through and that a lot of my friends or other people have fallen into that have prevented them from finding jobs as freelance developers when starting out. And I'm going to share with you how to avoid these pitfalls as well. If you want to learn about all of that, you'll want to subscribe and check out my upcoming videos. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments and I'll see you soon.